Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. We're back with some highlights from the Daytona Group 3 race at this week's Daily Race C and we've got some incredible drivers in this race. You can see there myself starting P11 and Mr. Mick Alzal, TRL Lightning starting P12 and also B Racer in P16. Uh, you might know him as Gallo from the World Tour events. Two of the fastest drivers in the world, definitely in the top five, there's no questions asked. They are the peak of this game in terms of talent. Now, I am not the peak, I am far from that. So we're starting just ahead of Mr. Mikhail Zal there, TRL Lightning, and we've got a lot of Supras in this race. I'm in the Jaguar, which is probably the second best car for this, I would say. Um, but the Super is dominant by over half a second. It's really, really, it's quite an overpowered car for this combination. As we go to go defensive there, the car behind also, as we go defensive, goes for a launch and it just collides. I don't think that was his fault. I don't think it was just a bit of a racing incident there, but we ended up hitting the other car as well. But we all got through the corner without spinning, which was the main thing. So we're going to carry on now. And we've got Mikhail Zal, I think, down in P12. So he's going to try and go around the outside in the Alpha, I think he's in this race. So Mikhail Zal in the Alpha, myself in the Jaguar, and I think Gallo there in the NSX. Now, like I say, the majority of people are in the Supra because that Supra is just on another planet on straight line speed. I presume they're going to BOP this car soon. I personally think take 1% power off it and it'll probably be where it needs to be because it'll still be pretty fast on the straights, but it'll just get rid of that how strong it is in terms of the, the top speed. It should still be pretty much where it needs to be on the other tracks as well. But yeah, let's skip ahead to start lap two. You can see Mikhail Zell going around the outside of the car behind us. He's putting himself up to P10, and now we've got a chase after P8. So we've got Mikhail Zell hot on our tails in this race while we're in the Jaguar. And we can also see in the distance in that mirror, I think I can see an NSX coming through. Now, I could see that happening. I could see it in the mirror. I was always pay, paying attention because when you're in a race with these drivers, you have to be looking at where they are because they're going to be coming through. They're the fastest driver in the world. And we're just trying to work our way through the traffic as well in the Jaguar, which, like I say, it hasn't got the top speed, but it does have pretty good acceleration. So through these corners, Jaguar, very, very strong. Actually, through this section here, the Jaguar is probably a little bit stronger than the Supra. However, as soon as we get to here, that Supra just waves goodbye and drives off into the distance as the Jaguar just tries to hold on in the slipstream. You can see also Mikhail Zal behind us in, in the Alpha, very quick through that middle sector, but again, on the straights, just doesn't have that grunt that the Supra has in front of us. Now, I think on the straights, the Alpha wasn't terribly, so you can see he's gaining on us in the slipstream, so it's got a little bit of grunt in that slipstream, and we're gonna work our way through this chicane. The chicane that was, it is so difficult to get the track limits perfect through this chicane. It's very easy to pick up a penalty on the exit there. I'm sure the majority of people in the comments will have picked up one, at least one penalty this week on that chicane. Let me know in the comments if you are one of them people, because I know for a fact that I've picked up quite a few there. As Mikhail Zal is going to go for a move round the outside. Now, we're going to break as late as we can. We break quite late. It does come across a little bit, but we also do probably squeeze him a little bit. There's a tiny bit of contact, but we both get through there. Mikhail Zal runs a little bit wide, so apologies to that. We do squeeze him ever so slightly, but I think it was fair. We had the inside line, and we didn't really have much else we could go there. So, yeah, we managed to hold on to the position. But, yeah, Mikhail Zal still right behind us. Luckily, didn't lose any further positions off that, and we're still in P9. So... Let's see if we can work our way forward in this race. We are obviously started on the hard tyres in this. Now, the strategy for this is you either start on the hard tyres, do four laps and then six laps on the mediums, or you start on the mediums, do either five or six laps and then do the rest on the hard. That is pretty much the strategy. There's not many cars that can really do anything other than that. We have made a car do seven laps on the mediums, but it wasn't particularly fast because we were saving so much tyres, so I don't recommend that strategy. But you can see now, starting to catch back up to P8, even though we're on the hard tyres. Now, there's some cars in front of us that are probably on the medium tyre in this race. So it's hard to judge what tyres people are on at this stage. This is a daily race, so it's not GT World Series level. The drivers are not all A+. plus. There is a lot of A+, plus in this race, but it's not GT World Series level. As Mikhail is going to go for a move on the right side, and we've got Gallo joining the party. Also, three cars here, but look at this amazing battle with Mikhail Zell. Side by side through the chicane i don't think there's many drivers you can have faith in doing that now i have to say if that was not mikhail Zal, i would not be going for that because there's no way on this earth i would have the faith in you know some random driver but with mikhail Zal, we have the faith that he knows how to drive and we both get through there cleanly and now we've got gallo 
right behind us in that intersect trying to slip stream past us we've got Mikhail right behind us there also trying to find the way past and we're going to go three wide into turn one with two of the fastest drivers in the world this is unbelievable action going on as Gallo makes that move around the outside now I was quite suspicious of Gallo because at this stage I was like his car is getting quite extreme levels of grip from that NSX now we know, we know the NSX is pretty fast here but tire wear so I was thinking maybe he started on the medium tires as lightning goes for a move up the inside there we see it happening we give him the space and now we go side by side again with Mikhail Sal. now our car has got a little bit more grunt than his so we managed to ex out accelerate him into the next braking zone but we could see that Gallo was fighting his way through this field a little bit too easy because we can see Mikhail Zal not finding it that easy as we're going to go again side by side we get sandwiched in between Mikhail Zal and the super on the left that was trying to let us through there and yeah luckily we all get through that so Mikhail absolutely amazing racing going on as Gallo has a massive moment on the exit there and I was pretty convinced he was on the medium tyres at this stage because I was just not sure that the hard tyres could just push through that easily he seemed to have a lot more grip than the other so at this stage I was convinced that Gallo was on the medium tyre versus myself and Mikhail's out on the hard tyre so at the moment it still looks pretty good for us as we're going to approach the chicane and we're probably going to be pitting this lap. Lap four, this is a perfect time to pit. You don't, you can go to lap five on the hard tyres if you start and have slightly better tyres, but you don't really need to do it. Um, the tyre wear now on this game, it's got grip until they're completely red. So best way to do this is just do four, six, in my personal opinion. Although if cars start battling, sometimes the five, five divide does work out quite well. As we've now got M Williams, who has been doing some really good pace this week in different cars as well. He's in the FT1. It was a really interesting race this because a few people using different cars and Gallo doesn't pit. Now that was a sign for me that he's probably on the hard, um, the medium tyre. And also Mikhail Zal, I think, stays out there to try and get a faster lap in on the hard tyre. Now he's in clean air. So Mikhail Zal stays out. We're now onto the soft tyres and now we need to push on and get a very, very solid outlap so that we can try and get ahead of them on the pit stop. So pushing along and now they're all in the pits and we're going to jump up a few positions here as we work our way into turn one. The FD1 behind us isn't going to fight us because on straight line speed, that car is lacking quite a lot, but it's pretty good on tyre wear. So he's just going to be pretty sensible there and not make any moves on the straights as we now come past the pit lane and we've got past Gallo and Mikhail Hazar. And we know that Gallo is now on the harder tyre. So at this stage, this is definitely in a good position for us in the Jaguar. We're ahead of them. We're competing with them. And we've managed to get a little bit of a gap between ourselves and Mikhail Azal as well, where he's pitted and come out in a bit of traffic. So push on now, see if we can get up to the group of cars in front of us and try and get ourselves. At this stage, it's very much looking like a P2 is possible. P1, I think, is on the same tyres as us. He's six seconds ahead. Probably not going to be able to get a P1. But at this stage, P2 and 3, is, a podium is definitely possible as long as we don't pick up any of them penalties on the chicane. So that pit stop worked out pretty good. We're going to skip ahead to the next lap as we were just in the slipstream and we've managed to catch right up to P5 and we're now right behind them. We've also got M Williams right behind us in the FT1 and we've got Gallo a little bit behind that FT1. You can see that Gallo is struggling a little bit to stay close because he's on them hard tyres and Mikhail Zal in that Alpha is probably wanting to get past um, Gallo because I think Mikhail Zal was on the medium tyres at this stage so through this left hand corner again the Jaguar I wasn't fully used to the Jaguar at this stage we did do quite a bit of running yesterday with it and we've got ourselves a lot more up to speed with this car I've actually found it's not too bad it's still half a second slower than the Supra but overall with Slipstream you can hang in there and you can actually compete with that Supra but yeah at this stage we're still trying to figure it out as our first race with it as we go into the braking zone you see purple sector there and now into the chicane now this chicane is the chicane that's going to catch a lot of you out for track limit says P5 goes a little bit wide there and this really loses us momentum. You can see I have to get on the brakes in the middle of the chicane. And now the annoying thing is we can't really go past the super because if we go up high, even with a bump draft, we're probably not going to get round the outside of that super. So I decide let's give them a bump draft here because there's no point trying to go for an overtake because we're just not going to make it work. Um, it's just not going to happen. So now we're going to go out to the right hand side and see if the FT1 is going to follow us and see if we can go around the outside but you can see that super is just too fast in a straight line no matter where we go it's not going to make it work but he goes a little bit deep there he breaks quite aggressively on the apex he holds that line and I have to say again he panics me there because we're going to watch a replay of that that absolutely scared the living out of me I can tell you look as we come through here his car just stops hits the barrier and stops dead right in front of me and you can see my inputs are going crazy because I just didn't know what had happened. So I lost another bit of time. M Williams gets through. P5 
past overtakes us and that loses us another sec. So just in the space of two corners by mistakes by other drivers, we've lost a good two seconds there. And it's quite frustrating because we were up there possibly going to be fighting for a podium position but now we're down in p6 we're going to go back for a move on m williams holding it to the apex we're going to go side by side together through this corner we really needed to get ahead of the ft1 because again that car hasn't got the straight line speed so i wanted to be able to you know pull us along on the straights because if we don't that alpha and that nsx are going to be right behind us in this race so again we're now going to push on and see if we can catch up to the next three cars in front of us however it's a big gap there. You can see the Supra on the straights. You can see the Delta just increasing, increasing, increasing. And now we need that FD1 to be bumped after us because Mick Alzao is going to go for a move into the chicane. You can see he's gone to the left-hand side. That Alpha actually, actually has quite good speed in the slipstream. He's gone for the move. He's made that move work. And now we're going to go through the chicane. However, on the exit here, we're going to run a little bit wide. We keep the right-hand tyre on the white line. However, like I said before, I'm sure a lot of you have picked up this penalty. It is so easy to get. And unfortunately, we pick up half a second penalty, which is going to drop me down probably behind Gallo there. You can see Gallo in the mirror. I have a little look behind to see where we're going to end up. And we're going to end up right behind him. So we're going to take that penalty frustratingly on lap eight, start of lap nine. And that drops me all the way back down to P8. But do you know what? We're having some brilliant racing with these people in front of us. And this is what Gran Turismo is about. You know, we started from the back and we're in obviously not the overpowered car, but this is brilliant. We're racing with four, four different types of cars here. We've got myself and the Jaguar, the FT1, the NSX and the Alpha. Absolutely brilliant racing going on. We've got two laps to go. Can we manage to get back past a couple of these cars with some help from Slipstream? We can see Gallo still on them hard tires, still struggling a bit. Our tires are still pretty good. You can see on the bottom right hand corner, we, you know, on the telemetry on the bottom right tire, it's still pretty solid. We should be okay. The front tires look okay. We should be okay to go to the end and push quite aggressively. So keeping that tight line through there, great racing going on in front of us side by side there. And now Gallo is going to tuck behind and probably try and get the slipstream. As Mikhail Zal now is benefiting from that clean air and he's actually caught up to the next group of cars. So frustratingly, that penalty has really, and then that little bit of time we lost when the car lost it in the chicane, we had to back out and then he crashed into the wall, we backed out. It does really look like we possibly could have had a P3 out of this race, but that's racing. Things happen as Gallo goes for a move. And I thought, do you know what? Let's mix this up. Let's go free wide. And we are going to try and go free wide into the chicane. Williams backs out. Gallo takes it around the outside. We're going to try and hang wide and try and get a better exit. You can see that Gallo sl slows it down on the apex perfectly there and gets the apex done. And now we've got the slipstream to Gallo. Can we go for a move though? The problem again we're going to have is going around the outside is pretty much impossible so what we're going to do is we're going to just run up behind him and try and go for the move once we've got his car in a straight line so now that he's in a straight line now we're going to build that slipstream up and now we're going to see if we can go around the outside because we wouldn't have made it work any other way really so going around the outside can we hang it around the outside of gallo we're going to break as late as we can we've got a tire advantage and gallo just understeers a little bit into us there knocks us off the track i don't think it was deliberate pretty similar to what happened with myself and lightning um it just understeers a little bit there and we just get back on the track so not a massive deal loss but unfortunately we was in a position to hang it around the outside there but that little bit of contact just squeezes us wide and now we're down to p8 and unfortunately that has dropped us quite a bit out of the slipstream you can see there with the dirty tires through the next corner we're down to 1.1 seconds so going to be very difficult to catch them back up now but we're going to keep going and see where we finish as we come through this right hand corner and onto the left hand corner but you can see still struggling with that grip and unfortunately it wasn't enough as we come to the finishing line we finish 1.1 seconds behind but some great racing with Gallo and Mikhail Zao in that one but we're going to go again and this time we're going to get in the Supra now for this race we had Mikhail Zao in the race right behind us this time in the Mazda but we don't have um, Gallo. Gallo decided was um, was not in this race, so this is going to be interesting. Where can we get to from P11 on the grid in the Supra? Can we fight our way to the front of the grid? We know that the Supra is quite overpowered. You know, you can overtake cars so much easier in this car, and it makes the racing a little bit more simplified because on the straights you just go breezing past cars because it's so strong. However, the majority of people are also in the Supra, so that's going to make it a little bit more complicated in trying to get to the front. But let's see what we can do. Starting from P11. And Mikhail Zell right behind us in that Mazda, which isn't a bad car here. Again, it's probably in the top five cars. However, again, it's not got the top speed. I have tried it. It just does not have the top speed. So again, on the straights, that car will struggle. As we go for a move straight away, 
at the start of the race, putting ourselves up into P10 with a nice move up the inside there. And yeah, again, we're starting on the hard tyres because again, we want to be on the medium tyres at the end to hunt down any drivers that have started on the medium tyres because then they're going to struggle at the end and they'll start fighting and we can benefit from that. But we see a massive group of cars here, very close racing in front of us there as we're working our way through this right-hand corner before the left-hand corner onto the straight before the chicane. So this is going to be interesting. There's a car for GT going for a move up the inside there and Martin there goes a little bit wide, gets squeezed out a little bit, I think, there. Um, just onto the outside and unfortunately loses two positions. He did get a little bit of a nod there into the braking zone. So unfortunate for um, Magic Alton in front of us there. Um, I called him Martin because he's from our channel. But yeah, let's go around the outside and get the slipstream to Chinese Chan there and see if we can make our way through the chicane into another position. But you can see that great move by Chinese, I think it was Chinese Chan there, puts himself up into P7 and the Ford GT just hangs back there but now we've got the slipstream to the Ford GT can we find a way past this Ford we're gonna have a little look on the outside but again this is what I'm saying there's no way of going around the outside of people on this game with the power of the slipstream no matter what car you're in you can't go around the outside from the bank section it just doesn't work again here we're gonna have a look outside the slipstream and you see what happens is we just have to top back into the slipstream so holding position in P8 can we go for a move up on the inside we're gonna have a little look on the inside try and break late we break as late as we can slowing it down into the apex and we managed to get ourselves up into p7 so a pretty good start to this race we're up into p7 we're on the hard tires and we're only 5.2 seconds behind the leader so this could be interesting if we can manage to work our way through the traffic there may be a possibility of at least a podium but possibly a win in this daily race seat from p11 on the grid but we've got to be aware that we've got a certain mikhail zhao lightning chasing us behind us there he is working his way through he's down two cars behind so you can see he's the third car behind us there he's just struggling to get past on the straights and again that is what we say about the straight line speed that makes the difference being in the super because it just makes overtaking so so much easier than when you're in a different car but again hopefully pd can do something about that i think taking one percent power off this car would definitely help it just needs to knock a couple of miles per hour off it just so some other cars can actually compete on these power tracks because as soon as you get to any track like this that super is just gone there's nothing you can do you can't you can't live with it it's just flying but we're going to work our way through the chicane into the chicane here and you can see there another uh, move done by chinese chan there to put himself up to p5 and now we're behind p6 in that rib. now he goes to the right and he leaves it open for me so i was like i'm taking that however he tries to squeeze us back and i don't think he realized he left it open but we were going to take that he left the door open for me to go up the inside of the slipstream i don't think he was too happy about it but you know if you leave the door open i'm going to take it so i took that and now we've got the inside line he's going to try and go around the outside there but it's probably not going to work because we've got the slipstream and the inside line so just make sure we break nice and early here so that we don't miss the apex keeping it nice and smooth down to first gear he does give us a little nudge in the braking zone but nothing too severe and we managed to carry on and get on our way to see if we can catch up to p5 now you can see we've actually gained a little bit on the leader on that lap even though we're on the hard tires probably helped by a bit of slipstream um on the straight but also we're doing some reasonable pace now 45.4s on the hard tires it's not amazing um we can do a little bit faster than that without slipstream but it's good enough at this stage of the race to give us an opportunity at the end to try and see if we can battle as we see side by side in front of us again there with kev force and chinese chan they're going to go battling into the next corner this is kind of good for us because it just brings them closer to us and means it's a, a car that we're going to probably overtake a little bit sooner so the faster we get through this traffic the better for me and we can see there kev on the left hand side we're going to pick up his slipstream and see if we can work our way around the outside again though you can see when we go to the outside you can see that slipstream it just makes it impossible to pass however kev i think decides to back out he puts the hazards on there so i see that i go to the right hand side he's going to tuck in behind us and try and use our slipstream to benefit his pace so you know don't need to do that but it is beneficial for me and also it can benefit him as well if he can manage to send the slipstream if we just about managed to keep it on the track limits through there again that was very very close to picking up one of them half a second penalties which can absolutely destroy your race but we can look behind us there in the mirror and we can see i think mikhail zao's dropped down quite a bit he's actually dropped a few cars behind so he's got a lot of work to do to catch us up in this race we're actually flying through this field pretty well at the moment and everything's looking quite nice 
to get a very, very good result in this race as we work our way into turn one. Two more cars go inside. We've got GT Lear and Chinese Chan going side by side. Chinese Chan's going to try and go around the outside there. I think he was also on the hard tyres, the same as us. I think he was. I'm not 100% sure. It might have actually been on the medium tyres looking at the, the grip levels that he's got. But we, I'm pretty sure that GT Lear was on the hard tyres at this stage. So Chinese Chan probably on the mediums looking at the pace he's getting out of the exits of the corners. But it's helping me out because we're actually in the slipstream and we're staying with it. So as we watch all the cars through here, you can see Mick Alzel just about peering your mirror there in the view there in that Mazda. So he's a couple of seconds back. You can see him again just at the back of that, the Ford. He's not too far behind, but he is working his way through the traffic, just finding it a little bit harder to actually get the overtakes done on the straight because, like I say, that car does really struggle on the top end compared to the Supra. But now we're working on to our way onto the back straight. Now, we're going to probably go into the pits on this lap because, like I say, 4-6 divide was a way to do this race. So picking up that slipstream, can we manage to get another position before the pit stop phase? This will be interesting as we see that group of cars all in the slipstream now. Very, very close racing going on here between P3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, I think it is. Now, as we work our way into the chicane, again, trying to make sure we don't pick up any of them horrible penalties through here. Just making sure we take it nice and smooth. Managed to get that done. Not the best exit as we see a car up ahead there. It looks like P, I think it is there. I think it's P3 that's actually picked up a penalty as we get a bit of a bump draft from the car behind because he knows there's no point going around the outside because it just won't work. Now we're getting the slipstream from Leah and this is going to benefit us because one thing again with Grand Turismo pit entries is the higher speed you go in, the faster you come out because basically it takes a little bit longer to slow the car down when the car goes through the, through the pit lane. And it's kind of, it's a little bit bogged, but you can see it gives us the advantage. We're now actually ghosted there. We're going to go up the inside, right to the apex and we managed to make that position up into P7. So now we need to push with this car and like i say we mentioned this ghosting system on the nations race and i said i'd do the exact same it's just a bug with the game i feel like they probably shouldn't ghost cars as easy but you've got the problem that two cars are coming out and they're basically inside each other so if they don't do that what's going to happen that's the only issue i think the only real option they've got is to ghost cars initially but yeah it's a hard one it's something for pd to figure out i, I really don't know the solution to that at the moment but we're going to work our way now on the straight and we see GT Leia picking up that slipstream. She's going to actually go for a move here around the outside. Now, the problem with this is she's going to try and take that wide line. We've still got the inside line, which is going to give us the advantage now coming back into the braking zone. And now all we have to do is just break reasonably late, hold a tight line, which we managed to do down to first gear. Then we're going to go back up to third gear, get that traction. And now we're back on our way. And now hopefully we can push through this middle section and build a little bit of a gap up and just make, make it so that we can actually now push on. We're in a podium position. Can we now push on for the win in this race? We can see that P1 is now on the hard tires. Dead Eye Dowboy there in P1 is on the hard tires. So we're gonna skip ahead now, and you can see we've actually managed in a few laps there. We've done some pretty solid laps without much of a slipstream, 44.4, and now we've got the slipstream, and we've caught up to P2, Dead Eye in front of us, who's on them hard tires. P1 is, I think, on the medium tyres. I'm not 100% sure at this stage. It does look like he's on the mediums, but we definitely have an opportunity at a win in this race. Um, if you want to watch another view on this perspective of this race, I think Deadeye's got his video on his channel as well, so make sure you check out Deadeye um, on YouTube as well. He'll also have the video of his own race there from this from this race, but his view of it. So it might be you know something you can watch on there. Now, we're going to push on behind Deadeye and see if we can get that slipstream. He's obviously on them hard tyres, so we know this is going to be a little bit easier than overtaking someone on hard tyres because... Sorry, someone on medium tyres because we'll have so much more grip out of some of these corners. So we're going to pick that slipstream up all the way up to the chicane. And we can see behind us there, we've got Mikhail Zal right behind GT Lear. At the moment, probably struggling to get past because of the straight line speed. He does get past over there. He's up into P4 on lap 8 and he's 2.5 seconds behind us. Now he's going to lose... Probably another half a second though. Keep an eye on that delta to Mikhail Zhao. You're going to see it just go massively exaggerated on this straight. So at this point here, I decide there's no point trying to overtake Dead Eye because you're not going to make it around the outside on the back corner. So we're going to bump draft him. And now P1 has actually picked up a penalty. So as we come through here, P1 gets that penalty. We go to the right. And now we're going to possibly get ourselves into P1. So we're going to look around the outside, then go up the inside break as late as we can while trying to keep a very tight line to give the space on the outside and then we look behind and there's an opportunity it was a very very close one not too sure about that looked aggressive to me 
but maybe the door was open maybe dead eye left it open a little bit too much we've given us a space in the corner but did look a little bit aggressive but yeah i'll let them one sort that one out not involved with me so we're carrying on now we've got that gap up to one second and luckily for me we managed to keep that gap all the way to the finishing line and mikhail's out tiara lightning comes down comes to the finishing line in p4 just behind dead eye i think it is there as we go over the line we collect the win and you can see i think mikhail zao takes that p4 a fraction of a second look at that two point almost identical over the line so very very close finish there for the final podium position but yeah great result for us p11 to p1 with mikhail hazao in the lobby what a result that is if you did enjoy this video subscribe to the channel let me know in the comment section and i'll see you again for more videos and live streams